Hello and welcome. We are here with Johnny the Battler Lawson, just ahead of his fight at BKB 24. It's at the O2 London in just a couple of days, that's Saturday the 22nd of January. Johnny, how you doing, mate? Not too bad, mate. What about yourself? Good, thank you. Good. Uh, for the viewers at home, if you fancy a laugh, just try to turn in on the subtitles and try and watch YouTube understand me and Johnny, see what see what it throws out. Often it struggles with yeah. subtitles with us too. Isn't it too bad? <laughs> <laughs> no one, uh, we don't speak as nice as George, so um, let's see if we can manage to get through people understanding us. So, you were last out, Johnny, in November. That was your fight against Scott. And in fact, on the same card was your opponent, Aaron. So, should we start off by going with your most recent performance, how you felt? Uh, yeah, not too bad. Uh... Yeah, I tried, uh, I tried not to, uh, you know, I was saying that I was going to go out to SDAD, but, you know, I wanted to try and box a little bit more than what I normally do. And I, I think I've done that to a degree, but I'm a sucker for getting sucked in the end of scrap, you know. But, yeah, I gave up my best shot, and Scott was on point with his boxing, so he was really, really sharp, and, yeah, the fight went the way it went. Definitely. And it's that keeping the emotion in check because you are the battler by name and nature. Is that something that you've always struggled with in your combat sports career? Is making sure you stick to the plan and don't just throw it all out the window? It's not so much. I know I'll go out and I give it all, like, but you know, it's sort of, you know, it's, uh, I just don't go out throwing punches willy nilly. Like, you know, I sort of, you know, I, I know what I'm, I know what I'm about to throw whenever I throw it. Like, you know, I just don't go in recklessly. Well, sometimes recklessly, like, but most of the time, I know, I know in my head what I'm going to do, like. Absolutely. And have you got a strategy coming up with this fight with your opponent, Aaron McCallum? Mate, look, I just go in and I just give it to him then and we'll see where it goes, you know. Again, I'll try not to get a swingy, like, you know, I'm, I'm going to try and I need to start using my, my, my head a little bit more, you know, instead of just plodding in, you know, just try and tidy everything up. Try and box a little bit more. Of course, scrap whenever the opportunity arises, but just try and just clean up, just clean everything up, you know. That's something so, you've been working on recently. Yeah, mate. Yeah, it's, uh, I was sort of, but you know what? I think it was just more laziness than anything because I've been asked before, you know, would I not try changing the game plan up? And I think it was just out of laziness that I wasn't doing it. You know, I was just stuck. I was just, I had it in my head, right? I'm just going in the fight because that's what I'm known for and that's what I'm going to do. But the way the sport's progressing, all the lads are doing it. Like all the lads are like, you know, they're, they're, te they're you know, their technical ability, it's starting to get a lot better. And I just don't want to be left behind, like, you know, so I'm, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to try and up my game. Just, you, you know, just, use my head a lot more and, and just my brawn, like, because I think there's times where I'm just depending a lot on my chin and my toughness to push me through. And I'm, I'm taking unnecessary shots and I'm losing on the scorecards every time. Well, not every time, but near enough, you know. So I need to sort that out. That's a good point, is that you've been in the game for a long time. In fact, your last fight was double, di double digits, your 10th fight, wasn't it, with uh, BKB? So... You've been in the game a long time and you've been always been with the best. Have you noticed over the years that the level of opponents has been improving? There's been more consistent opponents. There's been fewer throwaway fights as time has gone on. Yeah, yeah, a lot. Like, the, as I said to you, like, the level is just, the bar is just rising every show, you know, and even, like, the lads that have been in for a while, the likes of, the likes of Scott, the likes of Tony, like them lads were before were just just scrappers and look like over the last their last couple of fights, like look how look how much they've came on, like the the power of them have came on leaps and bounds, like so yeah, so that's what that's sort of making me think as well, you know, I need to I need to start raising my own game up, like you know, I can't just keep the pound on and my ability to take a shot because it's not really getting me anywhere, like you know. Okay. Now, interesting name there was Tony, and you've obviously fought him twice. First off, very early in his career, when he was a, 
Well, it wasn't a tiger yet. He's just a cub, really. One a bit of a swinger, likes a scrap. And that was a very close decision. And then later on in the fight, just before this one, your ninth fight, um, you fought him. And there's a big difference. That was probably the best I've seen, Tony. And that was a cracking fight, one that the crowd really enjoyed. You obviously seen how much Tony's grown. But I think it's fair to say that you have as well. Is that I think you sometimes overlook your own improvements. Would you tend to agree? Uh, sometimes, mate, you know, like we're all our, uh, I think we're, we're all hardest on ourselves, aren't we? Like, you know, I'm very, I, I'm very hard on myself. We always have been, you know, because I, like, I, I think sometimes, like some fights, I think like I'm coming on really well and then I'll have like a, a shift per performance and then I'm like, fuck's sake. It's like, it feels like two steps forward and one step back at times. And it's just sort of hard to, give myself praise, you know, because I don't want to take my foot off the accelerator, you know, if I feel like the harder I am on myself, you know, it spurs me on, you know, don't want to get too comfortable in myself, like, you know, I don't, I don't want that, I just keep pushing myself as fast as I can. Absolutely, and it's all right saying that, but you've actually proved it as well in the ring with the names you fought and the consistently the names you fought, you fought anyone coming in, so it's one thing saying it, but you've actually backed it up as well, which is something I think that's why you're starting to get a, a following with the core BKB fans as a sort of, how can you put it, sort of name a brand in-house. All the BKB fans know know the battle and know Johnny that they're going to always get a good scrap with you. So would you like for your fan base to branch out a bit more to the casuals or are you happy with it being where it is at the moment with the core BKB fans? Look, mate, I'm, you know, yeah, I don't think I'm wrong. Like, having a bigger fan base would be nice, but, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to push myself out there to be like by, by lots of people, you know. Um, you know, I just, I love doing what I'm doing. And if people, you know, if, if, uh, if people enjoy watching me, they're naturally going to become fans of me, of mine anyway, you know. So, yeah, if, it, if, if more people jump on the bandwagon with me, like that, that's great. If not, um, that's okay too, you know. Yeah, but yeah, I'm just coming over to do my thing. It is fucking love it, mate. And you know, people people like to see the sort of fights that I put on. Like I like to think anyway. You know, he doesn't like go fucking watch a good hard scrap. Like, I think you'd fight in an empty room, wouldn't you? Ah, oh, mate, mate, it's an obsession, mate. I'm not <laughs> even joking. All that thing, you see. I get one fight out of the way, mate, and then I'm thinking for the next fight, mate. I'm always, I'm always hankering for a fight, mate, at all times. It's definitely not healthy, like you know. See if I could fight every week, mate. I would. I'd see the like the two month gap in between each fight, mate. It feels like an eternity. It really does. You've got the hunger. This is something that you can't be taught. You can teach someone a job. You can teach someone any shot under the sun, but you can't teach them that sort of heart and desire. And that makes you a dangerous man in the game. Yeah, well, I've got, I've got a lot of desire for it, like, and yeah, like, yeah. But me and me, anyone, mate, regardless of who they are, regardless of their skill set, mate, I don't care. I'll go in and I'll g- give it my goddamn hardest, like, no matter who I'm in. Even if I know I'm out of my, even if I know I'm, I'm out of my league, I don't care. I'll fucking, I'll still get stuck in, as you know. Yeah, love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Mad for the game, mad for it. Let's get on to your fight coming up in, I suppose, two and a half days, well, two and a half, three days, and by the time this goes out, probably the day before. Um, you're up against Aaron McCallum. Now, you fought on the same card in November. Have you managed to do much research on him, have a look at him? I had an OZ on YouTube just to, just to gauge what sort of fighter he is, and the only thing I'd come across was, his, I think it was his first two glove fights. And from what I've seen of them, he likes to get he likes to get involved, you know, he likes to work down close. So yeah, just a man after my own heart, you know, he uh, <laughs> a, for, a forward foot fighter, mate. He takes some shit like so that's what I've seen so far. Like yeah, that, that's all I've seen. So yeah, that's all I know, mate. That's all I know. Do you think then if you've seen it, he likes to have a scrap, do you think you'll end up end up just trading him with him? Like I said, mate, there's a, you know, time and a place for it. Like, 
you know, well, if, if we're going to scrabble there on my terms, I'm not just going to, I'm not going to let myself get sucked into it. I'm not, I'm not, you know, like I said, I fight a little bit smarter, mate, and, uh, yeah, fight a bit a lot smarter and scrap whenever I feel like it, not just at all times, because then, you know, I'm getting the shots off on my own, and then I'm getting, I'm receiving shots straight after, you know, so it's, it's sort of hard to get ahead in the scorecards when you're fighting like that. So I just need to be a, be a little bit smarter, mate, and engage with them whenever I feel like it. I suppose at the minute it's a bit of two-way traffic with the punches. In future, maybe on Saturday you want to make it a bit more one-way traffic, all going, your punches and not nothing back. That's it, mate. That is exactly it. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. That's it. It is, to, I'll just say, two-way traffic, mate. You know, you're fucking, you're, get, you're sort of easing it. He's in a head in the scorecards with your shots, and then next thing you're fucking receiving straight. You're literally just standing there waiting to take some. And I've got a, a I'm, I've been trying to get that mindset out of my head. Like, okay. you know, you know, I've sort of like I've proved that I'm, I can take the shots. I know I, I always say like that I don't like fighting people that hit and run. But I'm not hitting run, not run, but hit and evade. You know, I've never really had time for fighting people like that, but obviously I fought plenty often. But it done the you know the the one the, the one that fights against me, you know, the the play that's smart, you know, the one for you know. So I'm gonna have to try and get the same sort of mindset going on. You need to take a leaf out of Dan Chapman's book, really. That style of boxing. I, well, the the grey I don't think I could. <laughs> not just, I'm just not at that level just yet, mate. You know what I mean? But boxing wise, especially. You know, but yeah, that's the sort of thing, like, you know, how far Dan's came on and a handful of fights, you know, just just with, his, just with the level he fights at, mate, and the, the, the fight IQ that he's got, you know. Mm -hmm. I just don't have that at the minute. I just just, just got a hot wired for fucking first. Oh, smash, isn't it? I need to get, I need to, uh, yeah, mate, uh, I do need to be, keep it at bay to a degree, you know. What on Saturday would a win mean to you? And especially recently you had two wins back to back with Deakin and with Chaz and then lost it, two losses again with Tony and um, and Scott recently. Do you think a win now would be quite beneficial in your career to get it to spring back up, pick up I the know. momentum? I think it would, mate. I think a good solid win is, is, is exactly what I need, mate, because, uh, yeah, I've, uh, I've got my sights set, and I've said this time and time again to George, mate. I've uh, just got my sights set in the featherweight British title, and for me to get there, or to even be a contender for it, I'm going to need to start getting a, a, a good couple of wins behind me here. It catapult me up, you know? So, yeah, the first fight of the year, mate, I want to get, get the year off to a good start. Are we going to have a new year, new Johnny then? <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Yes, yes, 100%. Yeah. Yes, you guarantee it. Yeah. <laughs> so after this fight, have you got any names on, on your mind, potentially rematch with Scott or maybe a couple of fights down the line? I haven't, honestly, mate, I haven't really thought that far ahead, mate. I haven't thought, no, I know the, I know, like, well, as you, said, you just mentioned Scott there, I think he fights, I think he, he's fighting at a lower weight now. I, I've moved the upper weight division mm -hmm. now. Like, the weight cuts, mate, just weren't suiting me. Yeah. So I'm just uh, sitting at them, just fighting the at 76 from now on. So, I honestly, mate, I don't really know who all's in the featherweight division. At the, uh, at the minute, I honestly couldn't tell you. You know, so, but whoever, like, mate, I don't really go out calling for people, like, just whoever, Jim and Joe see fit I'll fight as long as it gets me that as long as it gets me closer to a title shot. So just whoever whoever wants it, you know. By anyone really. As long as it gets me to where I want as long as it, it uh, it's taking me in that direction. You know. So for Saturday, before we go on to your sponsors, have you got a prediction for me how the fight's gonna go? Mystic Meg. <laughs> I don't like I don't like doing the predictions, mate. I really don't. It's gonna be a win. It's gonna be a win. Absolutely. Or it's gonna be a win, mate. And I don't really like saying oh, I'm gonna knock him out in this round or that round, you know. It's gonna be a win anyway, mate. Regardless of how it's gonna come, it's gonna be a fucking win. 
going to be a good fight, man. That's what it is. Really entertaining fight. And you never fail, never fail to disappoint us. Uh, bloody hell, wrong way around. Never fail to impress us. We all, you know, we always love watching your fights, and especially ringside. You know, I love seeing them ringside, especially my favourite moment from a couple of shows ago with um, I think you versus Tony. It was trading against uh, the ropes in the middle of the second round. The whole place erupted. The whole atmosphere. I, I don't. Did you notice that while you were in the ring? Not so much, mate, to be honest. Not so much. It wasn't until I watched the fight back and heard all the roars. Unbelievable. Yeah, but when, when it was in there, thought whenever, I don't know about Tony, like, but no, I don't, didn't really take an awful lot in. It was, it was unbelievable from ringside and the whole atmosphere, the whole night just absolutely flipped. So we're looking forward to more of the action from Johnny, the Battle of Lawson on Saturday. So Johnny, who's, who's your sponsors? Let's have a hear all the people who make it possible. Yeah, mate, sponsors, uh, Pressford Shutters and Shop Fronts. Uh, we've got the Safeway Logistics and Violent Gentlemen. So yes, lads, much appreciated. You know who you are and uh, you are always welcome to be on board for as long as you want. Lovely. And I'd, I'd also like to say a quick thank you. This is my first interview since Toe the Line got 1,000 subscribers. So we're now on the 1,000 uh, Club and we now get adverts on, on YouTube. I think um, me and George made uh, 64p today from adverts between us. <laughs> so, Brilliant. so 32p each. Thank you all for subscribing. Um, Johnny, before you go, have you got any ideas what I can spend the money on? My share of the 64p? Ah, uh, look, mate, the sky's the limit. Mate, just you going to <laughs> Happy days. Maybe I'll be sponsoring your next fight as well with money like that coming through the door. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Johnny, thanks very much for your time. I'm looking forward to seeing you on Saturday. And you, mate. Take it easy. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.